parts of a manual sewing machine and their functions. We'll be starting with the two balance wheels that are connected together with a cord. So what the balance wheel does is it helps the machine to run. So if I put my legs on the pedal and do this, it helps to be able to sew. So this and this are what we call the balance wheel. Then we have stitch regulator that goes from 30 to 6. 30 is the one that makes your seam really tight and 6 is the one that makes it really loose. So when you're trying to make a gathered stitch, you want to put it on 6. So your, your seam will be really loose and it's easy to loosen that kind of seam. But if you put it on 30, it will be really tight and I'll suggest that you put it on 10 when you're sewing, when you're making normal stitches use 10 on the stitch regulator then it's also used for back stitching when you're trying to lock your seam when you're making a an outfit so if i do this i go up the the seam reverses and then if i'm sewing and i go up the reverses then i come back down and it comes back to the front so it kind of like helps you to lock your stitch yeah that's what stitch regulator is Next is the needle clamp and the needle screw. So this is the needle screw. I'm going to try to unscrew it here. So unscrewing it means that you're removing the needle from the needle clamp. So the needle clamp houses the needle. The needle screw keeps the needle in the clamp. We have the presser foot and the presser foot lifter. So the presser foot is where you put your fabric before you start to sew. So you want to place your fabric here and put the presser foot lifter down to hold your fabric in place while you sew. So this guy here is the presser foot and this guy is the presser foot lifter. Spool pin. This is what we call spool pin. It's the part that houses the thread. The part where you put your thread on before you start to sew. So this guy is the spool pin and it helps you to be able to put your thread in place. Then we have the thread guide. That's all the passages that the, all the places that the thread will go through before you can start to sew. So I'm going to go through here to here. passages all those places are what we call the thread guide they kind of guide the thread all the way to the needle the tension disc this guy puts pressure on the thread so that it's not too loose while we're sewing and so that our seams can be firm so that's what it does you can see that it's one of the passages it's one of the thread guide so it just it helps to put pressure. So if your stitches are too tight and you have adjusted your stitch regulator and it's still too tight, then you might want to loosen your tension disc a little bit. Then we have the bobbin and the bobbin case. This is called the bobbin and this is called the bobbin case. The bobbin case houses the bobbin. The bobbin is where we put thread under the machine so that it can align with the thread on top to sew. So we have the bobbin, the bobbin goes into the bobbin case, so this is what you want to do. The thread is this way, you put it in the bobbin case, and you do this, and then you insert it under the machine. Then we have the shuttle carrier. This part of the machine is called the shuttle carrier because it houses the shuttle. The shuttle is the bobbin case, so it houses the bobbin case, and it's called the shuttle carrier. So what you do is, after putting your shuttle, your bobbin in the bobbin case, after putting the bobbin in the bobbin case, you put your bobbin case in the shuttle carrier, and it has to snap. So when it's rolling like this, you have to put it into this guy, and then it snaps. 
then there's the machine plate this flat steel and it just you can open it to access the shuttle carrier or the shuttle and you can close it when you're about to start to sew so it opens and it closes and lastly we have the pedal the pedal is where you place your legs to ride the machine so the pedal works of course everything works together and so you use your balance wheel to start and then your pedal does, your pedal does the rest of the work if you're just trying to ride for the first time I would advise that you put one foot at the back and one in front so that when you roll, when you start your balance wheel, you can have one foot in front, one foot at the back, and it's easier for you to ride.